Hello YouTube. As I explained in my other video, what can you do with an electrical engineering degree? Electrical engineering, like other engineering fields, is a trunk that leads to different branches. These branches can share a common root, but they all focus on something specific. In a job, you will have to know more than one branch, but today I want to focus on explaining what is communications engineering for those of you who are interested. So, what is communications engineering? If you observe the world around you, you will notice that we live in a time where you can communicate across the world with a device the size of a chocolate bar. You can send messages, make calls, and even access the internet. But have you wondered how these devices work? Well, communications engineering touches on all of these topics. When you are a junior or senior in electrical engineering, you typically have the ability to choose elective courses that interest you. If you decide to take communication electives, you will learn about the rules of how information is transmitted over a medium. This means that it could be through the air, through a wire, or even the vacuum of space. The actual physics of wave propagation is more related to the RF emphasis, but the rules to send and receive information is what we are referring to in this video. If you decide to take these classes, you have the option to learn about analog communications, digital communications, digital signal processing, or DSP for short, radar systems, fiber optic communications, and wireless communications, just to name a few. Since they are most likely going to be electives, you can have the option to take the ones that sound interesting to you. I will explain a few of these classes in hopes that it can catch your attention and hopefully, hopefully help you enjoy your career. So let's begin. We will start with Analog Communications. Analog Communications introduces the idea of modulation. Modulation is basically using higher frequencies to send lower frequency information in order to avoid large antennas. Let's look at an example. Let's say that the first graph is part of a song you want to transmit over the air. As you can see, the signal is just arbitrary. This wavelength of this voice is too large, and if we wanted to receive it over the air, we would need a giant antenna. So what we do is we use another signal that's much faster with smaller wavelength to carry it. The second graph is an example of that. Finally, you combine both signals and you get the signal on the third graph. As you can see, the new waveform is a combination of both of the initial waves. The outer envelope is the information you want to send. This type of modulation is known as amplitude modulation. If you take this class, you will learn about this example and other types of modulation. These types of modulations are still used in industry, but instead of sending signals, it's used to send bits, so it is important to learn the fundamentals. Digital Communications Digital communications is what currently drives our modern world. This type deals with a similar subject, but instead of sending analog signals, which can take any value, we are actually sending zeros and ones. Everything else remains the same as in the previous example. The reason this is done is because at the receiving end, it is easier to tell if a signal is high or low, as opposed to an infinite number of values. With analog, we retrieve an approximation of the signal, but with digital, we can receive exact values. Digital Signal Processing Digital signal processing refers to classes where you deal with the receiver and transmitter of a communication system. The idea is basically to convert an analog signal like music and your voice to zeros and ones, or convert zeros and ones to music, your voice, or any other analog signal. The recent reason this is done is to process and store data more effectively. This is done at every transmitter and receiver system, and it's personally one of my favorite subjects. 
there are a lot of interesting areas that fall into the communications category. Some of these include standards like LTE, 3G, Wi-Fi, and even some encryption and decryption methods. If you want to be an expert in any of these fields, you have to get a master's degree or a PhD or work in industry for a few years. However, the exposure you gain by taking these classes can help you discover a passion. If any of these subjects sound interesting or fascinating to you, then communications engineering might be for you. If you have any questions on anything or would like to see a more detailed video on any of these subjects, please leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.